Where can you be on top of the world down under? Today, I'm on a sailboat in the Auckland Harbour, the city of sails. This is fantastic. Welcome to Laura McKenzie's Traveler. Hi, I'm Laura McKenzie, and welcome to New Zealand, one of the most beautiful countries in the world. There is so much to do here, and because the seasons are reversed, the possibilities are endless. Now, this is Auckland, the country's largest city. They call it the city of sails, because here life revolves around the harbor. From the Lord of the Rings Hobbiton to an incredible sail across Auckland Harbor. Join me for a fantastic look at New Zealand. The translation of the Maori word for Auckland means the city of a hundred lovers. They say that because Auckland was a place that was desired by all and conquered by many. Located down under on New Zealand's North Island, about one third of the entire country's population lives in Auckland, making it New Zealand's largest city. The Auckland area is a crazy quilt of regions comprised of three harbors, two mountain ranges, 48 volcanoes, and more than 50 islands. There's no partridge in a pear tree, but they've got sheep, lots of sheep. But don't let the tranquil rural settings that surround Auckland fool you. This is a with it cosmopolitan city that continues to be ranked as having one of the world's best lifestyles. One of the best ways to appreciate the city of sails is from the water. Wow, great restaurants, outdoor cafes, really fun bars, and that view. Nothing like the New Zealand Harbor. Auckland is a water lover's paradise with some of the best beaches, swimming, diving, fishing, sailing, and water sports in the country. Land lovers can find plenty to see and do along the water's edge as well. But it's really about the water, with more boats per capita than any other city in the world. It's no wonder Auckland is also the current home of the America's Cup. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to race in the America's Cup? Oh, what a thrill. Well, here in Auckland you can. See those sailboats over there? We're gonna take the challenge. All aboard the Pride of Auckland, an adventure company that operates a fleet of sailboats on the sheltered waters of the Auckland Harbor. With their trademark blue and white sails, these yachts racing each other across the harbor have become a nautical icon in Auckland. They're extremely comfortable and relaxing for non-sailors, but also provide experienced sailors with the thrill of helming the wheel and trimming the sails. Ha, I'll volunteer. Yeah. I'll give it a go. Hey, tell me if I'm going in the wrong direction now. Okay, I will leave you going fine. Tell me about the Pride of Auckland sailing experience that sort of simulates the America's Cup, sort of what we're doing today here. We do a lot of match racing for corporates, a lot of corporate work and um, harbour challenges and, and and uh, companies come out and they race against each other and and uh, it's it's a great thrill. I'm driving to the right, that's what I'm doing. Okay, I have a confession to make. I've never really done this before, but the captain and crew are old pros, and they showed me the ropes. They made it look so easy. And you can work as much or as little as you like. It's not easy. <laughs> I'm gonna try uh, <laughs> More? Ready? it's not all work and no play. On all of their cruises, you can always choose to just kick back and enjoy and leave the sailing to someone else. 
We do a scheduled cruise throughout the day, a, a breakfast, coffee, lunch and dinner, as, as well as a sailing experience cruise. And we also do charter services. And we're also starting a whole day and half day cruise out, out into the, the main part of the Hauraki Gulf. So we can go out with one person on board, or whether it's 20, you know, with four yachts, we can take 80, a maximum of 80 out. We've had, even had 500 people out on them. We've hired an extra yachts, and, and there's been yachts in all directions, and we've had regattas, and it's great fun. And we're neck and neck in the home stretch, and Defender takes a short lead. Courageous is pulling up on the left. Ooh, it's gonna be a close one. It looks like we're gonna have a photo finish, and the winner is you. Congratulations. So this is not a boat, this is a yacht. This is a yacht. This is a monohull, monohull yacht. I could do this. I could live here. I could have a yacht if I wanted. <laughs> This is the Auckland Harbour Bridge I'm sailing under. That's right. If you like, you could bungee jump off the bridge. That's right. I prefer to sail under it. <laughs> yep. I think I've got the hang of this. They'll even let your kids give it a try. Sounds like a good idea to me. I'm getting a bit tired. Seems like the crew never gets tired of sailing, though. And of course, at night, the city it's full of a blaze of light and it looks great. It's fantastic. You don't like your job, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you can't be here and not get out on the water. City of Sales. Here's a tip. Visitors' passports must be valid for at least three months beyond the date you intend to leave New Zealand. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on New Zealand, go to lauramackenzietv.com. About an hour's drive south of Auckland in the beautiful New Zealand countryside is a working sheep farm. Owned and operated by the Alexander family for the last 25 years, walking onto their farm is like walking back into the past. 10,000 sheep graze freely on these remote rolling pastures as a gentle breeze creates ripples on a natural lake. It's idyllic, almost like a movie set. Hmm, it does look familiar, but let's get a closer look at those sheep. You know, you look really familiar. I think I have a sweater at home that looks just like you. You don't say. Re he says my jacket was made out of the wool from his second cousin. Uh, who would have thought? It's a family reunion. You aren't so sweet. Yes, you are. The sheep are adorable, and being here is so peaceful, and the kids love it too. I feel so relaxed. It's almost like I've been here before. Hmm. Anyway, it's a real working farm, yep. so if you're lucky, you might get to actually watch them shear a sheep. You might notice the clothing I'm wearing. It's uh, be a traditional shearing type clothes. The moccasins on my feet allow your feet to, to roll to hold the sheep. A very important part of shearing a sheep is uh, having the sheep in the right position and uh, yeah, holding it right so it doesn't kick. Um, the trousers are a double layer thickness for the, when you're shearing all day doing two, three, four hundred sheep in a day. Clothes are just about wet with the grease from the wool. But no, I'll try and show you how it's done. To shear a whole herd of sheep in a day means you've got to be fast. There's even sheep shearing competitions here, and the current record is under a minute. We have one naked sheep. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> okay, now to get all the sheep in here to shear, you gotta round them up, right? Yeah, that's right. And I hear that you're not the star of that show. It's snow. Yeah. Okay, let's go see what snow can do. Righto. Righto. Snow is one of the Alexander's trained sheepdogs, and they really put on a show. These dogs are incredible. In fact, they live by the rule, no sheep left behind. And speaking of competitions, the sheep herding trials are taken very seriously here in New Zealand. 
Watching a trained dog wrangle sheep is amazing. I had to know how Dean trained him. I suppose my sheep dogs have got a natural ability to, to chase the sheep and eye the sheep. So uh, yeah, it's just fine tuning where you want them exactly. It's repetition, I suppose, of teaching them when you want them to stand, training them, getting them to stay in one spot and, and uh, giving them the command. In repetition, they learn what the command is or different commands for going different ways. Snow's an eye dog. He'll, uh, he won't bark at the sheep and he'll go head the sheep and bring them back to you and he'll stalk the sheep with his eyes, turning them, looking at them. Just watching those dogs wore me out and made me hungry. If you come with a group, this is Suzanne and she'll make lunch for you. Hi Leah. Great food. Look at these raspberries. Huh? I'm having a great time and the food is incredible. But there's something about this place. Wait a minute. Shire's Rest. Shire. Hmm. Welcome to Hobbiton. Welcome to Hobbiton? <coughs> wow, that's it. We're on the Hobbiton set from the Lord of the Rings movies. How cool is that? Chosen by Peter Jackson as one of his prime locations for the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Alexander's sheep farm was transformed into Middle Earth by the efforts of hundreds of designers, crew, and even the New Zealand Army. Jackson first spotted the farm while scouting for locations overhead in a helicopter. With no power lines and virtually no buildings, the farm had everything the set designers needed to work their movie magic. The lake became the site of Bilbo Baggins' birthday party, and the natural mounds were perfect for hobbit holes. Much of the landscape has been returned to its natural state, but there are still plenty of reminders of the endless filming that was done here. Let's check it out. Okay, now obviously this is a picture of Bag End as it was in the movie. As you can see, the very large detail they went to to ensure they had uh, the book as it was so well described by Tolkien. The stairs that were put in, for Gandalf to greet Bilbo when he came for his birthday celebrations. The front entrance, again, the only hole that was built big enough for people to go inside of, but all the interior shots done in Wellington. This is so great to think, I'm at Bilbo's house, and Gandalf came right up that walk. You know, it's one thing to come here and say, wow, this is Hobbitown. But what you have to remember is what the filmmakers came for. They came for what New Zealand has to offer. They came for this. A visit to the Hobbiton movie set and farm tour is a great excursion out of Auckland. And just in case you could ever forget the experience, they've got plenty of souvenirs available to take home with you. Here's a tip. Driving times in New Zealand may take longer than they look on paper due to narrow winding roads and hilly terrain off the main motorways. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on New Zealand, go to lauramackenzietv.com. New Zealand is full of surprises. Everywhere you look, there's something to capture your attention and your heart. So where should you stay in the middle of all this beauty and excitement? What luxury hotel could possibly combine the natural beauty of the New Zealand landscape with the cultural sophistication of a world-class city and serve it up with a double dose of genuine Kiwi hospitality? The Five Star Langham Hotel Auckland, of course. Conveniently located in the heart of the city, the Langham Hotel Auckland is a great choice for luxury accommodations in town. Well, the hotel is beautifully situated uh, at the top of the hill. Auckland is sort of built around a hill. As you know, there's something like 23 volcanoes that comprise the greater area of Auckland. Um, so it's quite a hilly area. And we're about a 10 minute walk from the centre of town and about 15 minutes walk down to the harbour site. It is a very friendly environment. In fact, New Zealand's a very friendly place. And that's one of the great attractions about it. People come here because they feel safe. Um, amongst the, well, all of the New Zealanders, the Kiwis are very friendly people. 
Safety and friendliness are two big draws to Auckland, and the Langham Hotel Auckland is keen on both. The standard rooms and suites are anything but ordinary. Large open floor plans with lots of light, beautifully decorated with fine furniture, custom flooring and window treatments, fresh flowers, live plants, and just wait until you see the complimentary coffee bar in every room. Wow! The service here is unbeatable. I've never seen a hotel staff be more professional and friendly at the same time. I had to know how Greg gets them to be so nice. You know, I'm very lucky. You know, I'd like to claim some glory for it, but it's not true. I think we just have a really wonderful team. There's a delightful culture in the hotel, and the team really like to provide service. Relaxed and friendly service. Uh, it's not too formal, but it's not too informal either. Well, I found it to be just right, and you will too especially when you find out how close it is to my all-time favorite vacation activity, shopping. Okay, just to get your bearings, High Street's here, Queen Street's one block over, and if you see the fountain, you're in Shopping Central. This is big city shopping at its best, and the exchange rate makes shopping in New Zealand affordable and fun. You'll find the usual suspects here and a few surprises. You know what I noticed here? It's kind of quirky. You know how people drive on the left in New Zealand? They walk on the left on the sidewalks, too. If you walk on the right side like we normally do, they'll bump right into you. Stay left. Not all the stores take credit cards, so make sure you bring plenty of traveler's checks. Here in New Zealand, the big buy is sheepskin. Cute. Cuter. Cutest. Parnell Street is my favorite area. It has a village quality about it that's charming and inviting. This is where to find the trendy little boutiques and the local designers. And right down there, I see a table with my name on it. I'm gonna go have coffee. It seems the Lord of the Rings is everywhere here. It looks really rough, but it's so soft. It almost feels like cashmere. Love that New Zealand wool. New Zealand is a great place to buy Polynesian art, but you kind of have to know what island you're, you're looking at. For example, this one's from New Guinea. You can tell because New Guinea art has inlaid shells and they have a lot of chalk coloring. For example, up here is a really good example of the chalk that they use to color. So you can tell that that's New Guinea. This is Solomon Islands. You can tell that because they do a lot of inlay. Over here, Tonga. Tonga is very similar to Hawaiian. They have the big smiles. This one over here again is New Guinea with the chalk painted on the wood and they use a lot of hair and, uh, and shells. Over here, this is the local stuff. This is Maori. The Maoris are the native New Zealanders and a fascinating Polynesian culture famous for their tattooed faces. Now the airlines are really sticky about the weight of your bags when you fly to New Zealand. So if you're one kilogram over, they're gonna make you offload it or pay a lot of extra overweight. So what I do, I come to the market, if I do a little souvenir shopping, and pick up one of these really cheap duffel bags to put my souvenirs in. Necesito. Here's a tip. Other accommodations in New Zealand include farm stays where you can stay on a working farm, home stays, and service departments. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And for more information on New Zealand, go to lauramackenzietv.com. Had enough R&R? It's time for some more adventure, Kiwi style. New Zealand is a country where adventure should be its middle name. And here in Auckland, they've taken the sport of bungee jumping to a whole new level. Taller than the Leaning Tower of Pisa, Statue of Liberty, Eiffel Tower, Sydney Harbour Bridge, and Great Pyramids, Sky Tower is over a thousand feet tall and is the tallest tower in the Southern Hemisphere. A glass-fronted elevator ride takes only 40 seconds to get to the top, but it only takes 20 seconds to come back down on the Sky Tower's most popular attraction, Sky Jump. Sky Jump is a cable-controlled base jump. Participants fly Superman style 630 feet at a speed just under 50 miles an hour. Using the same technology the film industry uses to create falling stunts, jumpers wear a flying suit and a full body harness. 
They're then clipped to the jump cable by a professional jump master, and finally they just step off. Floating on a cushion of air, jumpers fall very fast until just above the ground, then they decelerate to a safe landing speed. The rush is awesome. Oh, if only I had more time. But all good things must come to an end, even great vacations. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of New Zealand with me. What a beautiful country. Hey, they've got great food, the nicest people, and adventures to the max. Now that's a vacation. Be sure to join me again next time from another terrific destination somewhere else around the world. From Auckland, I'm Laura McKenzie. Bye-bye.